How's it going everyone, Boone here. So today I'm gonna to be talking about screen replacements inside of Adobe After Effects. Now, there's a few different ways that you can perform one of these, but for this specific technique, I'm gonna be showing you something that's pretty versatile that's gonna help you keep all of your reflections intact. And not only that, you're gonna have control over those reflections, so you can control the opacity of them, bring them in and out if you want. It's a pretty cool method, so let's jump in and see how it works. So I'm here inside of Adobe After Effects and I have this sample clip that I've shot of me holding a phone and you can see my reflection in the phone screen, but the phone is turned off, it's just a black screen. And the beauty of this technique is that you can use it on any screen uh, that's turned off like this it's, uh, and you'll be able to maintain those reflections. Okay, so for the first step, with the clip selected, I'm gonna go to Effect. Boris FX Mocha and hit Mocha AE. That's going to apply this effect. I can see it in the effect controls panel. If you can't see that, go to window and select effect controls. You can also find this effect in the effects and presets panel under Boris FX Mocha. This comes bundled for free with Adobe After Effects, but you can pay to have the premium uh, pro version. Now with this selected, I'm going to click this big Mocha button. Now, don't be afraid of this program. There's quite a bit going on here, but it's actually quite easy to use once you play around with it for a bit. And they have an essentials workspace that makes it um, extra easy to use. So make sure you're, you're set up in this workspace. So I'm gonna go grab this X-Spline tool. Now to track this, I wanna place some track points around the phone, but I really wanna avoid the middle of the phone where I have that reflection. It's causing a lot of movement, and I don't want that movement to throw off my tracker. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of circle around the outside edges here and then back down here and to close this I'm going to right click now I can kind of position this and hopefully we'll get a good track with with tracking there's always a lot of trial and error so be ready to um, play around a bit to get things how you want them so I want to make sure that my track is set to perspective as well I'm gonna rename this layer created this layer I'm gonna rename it phone screen so when I bring it inside of After Effects I have a reference just under the track motion options I have the actual tracker buttons I can go forward and backwards the playheads all the way at the end here so I'm just gonna track this one frame forward and then we're gonna track backward and let's just kind of watch actually select the layer track forward and I'm gonna track back and then I'm just gonna kind of watch here and make sure that none of these drift too much now this is a planar tracker system so it's different from After Effects point tracker and the good thing about this is you don't actually it's not a straight translation of whatever I pick here is automatically translated to where the points will be placed this is gonna transfer this over to After Effects and when I apply it it's gonna apply as a corner pin but it's gonna take that corner pin data from the surface area. So let me show you what that is. Now let me first just let me check this and this is looking like a good track. Now to, to really see it, I'm gonna go over here and hit show planar surface. Now this is the information that is going to tell After Effects where to apply those corner pin effects. And this is gonna be the top left. So even if I move this down below, that's gonna stay top left. So you wanna be aware of that. So now I'm gonna put this in place of where I want my screen to go. Just kind of rough this in. I will be able to make some adjustments after the fact, but it's really good to get this right first because it's much harder to make adjustments after the fact. Now to make sure this is set up right, I'm gonna click this show planar grid because as I move my surface area, it moves that grid. All right, that plane is looking good. Now I, what I can do is I'm just gonna save this, close it, and now all this information is saved within the Mocha effect and I'll be able to pull it up here. Now it's time to prep the clip that I'm gonna be using as the screen insert. Now this being a vertical screen, it's gonna make this a little complex. So I'm gonna go back to my project panel. I'm going to insert my last tutorial here um, because let's say I'm narcissistic and I wanna watch myself on screen. Now take a look here, this is, a, this is an Ultra HD clip, 4K, and what Mocha is going to do is that when it applies the tracking data, it's going to essentially apply corner, a corner pin effect, and it's going to pin all these corners and place them in my phone screen. Now the problem with that is that it's going to squash it down because this is vertical. So I need, I need this to match the resolution. So since the tracking data is on my original clip, I need my insert asset to match the resolution. And this original clip is the same as my insert. It's 3840 by 2160 
Ultra HD 4K. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my insert and I'm gonna pre-compose it. And I'm gonna select move all the attributes to the new composition. Now we wanna stay organized here because this can get a little confusing and complex. So I'm gonna call this screen insert. Hit okay. So now we have this screen insert and it matches the same resolution as our clip here, but we still have the problem that it's gonna be squashed. So what I need to do now is dive down into this. I need to grab my clip. I need to pre-comp it again, move all attributes, but I'm gonna call this one screen insert clips. So this is where all the clips will be. This comp is where I'm going to match the resolution of the phone. So to do that, I'm gonna make sure I've got the screen insert clips comp. I'm gonna to go to composition, composition settings, and I'm gonna match the resolution of my phone. And I Googled it and it is vertically, it is 1080 by 2340. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now we can see that I've got this here, but I still need to reposition my clip. So I'm gonna right click on the clip, go to transform, fit to comp height, and that will automatically snap it there. Now if I wanna reposition it a little bit, I can do that. And if I want to, um, you know what, I, I don't want just a clip of my face, I want two clips. So let me open this up in layer panel. I think I'm gonna grab a different area here too. Let's grab this part right here. Okay, so now I've got this, I'm gonna transform this to comp height and let's just bring it over so we can see some of what's going on here there we go so I've got the screen recording here and then that's gonna cut to my face here and I'll reposition this okay so I have these two clips that are gonna show up on my screen I'm gonna close this comp so now I still have the problem in this comp where Mocha is gonna squash this so what I need to do to compensate is stretch this and since it's gonna be corner pinning this comp we're just gonna right click on this transform, fit to comp, and now it's gonna position that perfectly. So now when it applies that corner pin, it's gonna squash it back down. I know it's a little complex, so take a look at the workflow here. I've got the main nested comp here, screen insert clips. This is where all my clips will be and I'll edit them. This one, I changed the resolution to match the phone. That's nested in this comp, which I resized it, fit it to comp, so it matches the resolution of my main original clip, and that's applied in here. Everything is prepped and ready to go. I'm now ready to take that tracking data and apply it to the screen insert. So to do that, I'm gonna grab the original clip. I'm gonna to go to effect controls and under here is the tracking data. So now I'm just gonna create track data. And now I'm gonna collect the phone or I'm gonna select the phone screen layer and hit okay. They can't really see what's going on. It's because I've got this screen insert clip. Let me put this below here. And if I select original clip again in the Mocha effect, you can see right here it's applied these corner pins. So the data is there. Now I need to tell After Effects to export it to this screen insert clip. So to do that, I'm going to go to Export to. I'm going to change this from corner pin to corner pin supports motion blur. And I'm going to layer export to the screen insert. So now all that data will be applied to this. It's going to squash it down and check it out. Voila. Now I've got my screen insert. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so it's tracked in well, the corners are good, but it's just looking a little too fake. It's something with the colors, the brightness. So we wanna help blend this in and help it composite a little bit more. Now, if you're in a hurry, there's a real quick way that you can do this. And that's to just take the screen insert layer and go to the blend mode and just set that to add. And that will immediately bring back your reflection. And now you can try a different blend mode like lighten or screen, a bunch of them work. So just like that, now you have your reflection back. Super, super cool. But I wanna have some control over this. So let me show you a method that gives you a little more versatility. I'm gonna switch this blend mode back to normal. Now what I'm gonna do is create separate reflection. I'm gonna basically isolate the reflection layer. So to do that, I'm gonna duplicate the original clip and I'm gonna call this reflection. And I'm gonna bring this to the top. And now I'm gonna solo this so we can see what we got going on. So now it's just our original clip. So what I'm gonna do now is grab the screen insert. I'm gonna duplicate that and bring that on top of my reflection. And still we can't see it because I have the reflection layer, the original isolated here. I'm gonna call this reflection mat. So essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the screen insert data and isolate or use that to isolate uh, or mat out just the screen and then I'm gonna apply that blending mode. 
So to do this, I'm just gonna grab the reflection layer and with track mat here, I'm gonna set that to alpha mat. And now you can see, bang, I have just the screen with it turned off. So now the reason I wanna do this is because when I set this reflection mode to a blend mode, I can set this to, let's say, lighten. So now I have the reflection again, but the cool thing now is that I can control this reflection totally separate from my screen. So watch this, I can control, I can hit T for opacity, S for scale, and shift P for position. Now check that out. I can uh, bring the intensity of the reflection down. I can scale up the reflection, and that's all matted out, so that's not gonna leave for even more versatility, I can apply the same technique to the screen insert. Right now it's just sitting on top, but let's say I wanna actually mat out this area of the original clip and have it underneath. That way I can scale it and it will always be hidden by the borders of the phone. To do that, I'm gonna duplicate the screen insert, drag it beneath the original clip, and now I'm gonna grab the original clip and I'm gonna do alpha inverted. And now if I isolate this clip, you can see it's just this phone with it punched out and the screen insert is now under it. Now I can go up, grab a transform effect, apply that here to my screen insert, and now I can scale this up. Um, I can adjust the position and do whatever I want to it. So now you can see that's three different elements. I have the screen insert with total control, I have the original clip here, and I have the reflection. Very cool. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell.